Hello, all you lovely listeners, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Port of Dorks. As always, I am your captain, Jordan Peterson, sitting right beside me, my good friend, co-host, Jordan Peterson. Welcome to the show, Jordan. Well, thank you, Jordan. It's nice to have you here, Jordan. Well, thank you, Jordan. It's nice to be here. I'm just kidding. It's Alex Kleinsorge. It's good to be here, Jordan. <laughs> all right. So, episode five. For all you who have never listened to an episode before, this is a podcast by a couple of dorks dedicated to all you dorks. Where we talk about Mostly dorky things. Mostly games. That's Alex's forte. Mm-hmm. Movies. That's mine. Most of those two. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Those, those are strong suits. Yeah. Every once in a while we go off on like pretty much anything that's not politics. Don't. No. Don't say it. Don't. Don't say it. All right. So. First order of business, Alex. Video games, as we said, your forte. Yeah. Injustice too. My mm-hmm. God. Yeah, there's been a lot of stuff coming out. I can't. I've never been more. Last of Us Two, probably number one most anticipated video game of all time for me. And then it's Injustice. Injustice, mm-hmm. because I'm a I'm a comic junkie. I love reading comics. I love superheroes. Batman's my favorite superhero. I loved Injustice. Gods Among Us. I thought that was fantastic. Um, slightly disappointed that there's no subtitle for this. Yeah, I mean... It depends on games. Uh, I mean, a lot of time people kind of just... Play it safe and go with two most of the time. But it depends. But Gods Among Us is so, like... Yeah, that's it's pretty badass. Mm-hmm. Subtitle. I don't know how you follow that. I mean, there's still gods and they're still among us. Mm-hmm. Injustice, gods among us too. I think it's probably a little wordy. Um, you're just adding a two. I know. But then, like, people are gonna want to cut it down anyway. At first, I thought because there was no subtitle, I thought maybe this was going to be a different story. In this universe, I was like, oh, they're not doing the guys among us. Yeah. But then. Yeah, people do that a lot. I mean, if you, um, well, I was thinking of Metal Gear Solid, because the first one is technically, what was it, Metal Gear Solid, Tactical Espionage Action, I think it was its full title. See, I'm talking about too but wordy. They did drop, They no one would say that, everyone, <laughs> most people forgot about it. What'd they call it? Um, Metal Gear Solid. Oh. And then the second one was Metal Gear Solid 2. But it, oh, was, so, it so did that also was have name, a subtitle. It the was, original name for the first game? Yeah. Holy crap. But the... Yeah. Not the very first game. Oh. The first Metal Gear Solid game. The first 3D one. Oh. The second one was Metal Gear Solid 2 Guns of the Patriots. But, yeah. Metal Gear Solid probably isn't a great example because it always has long, wordy uh, yeah. <laughs> subtitles or, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, this picks up right where the last one left off, apparently. Where they're trying to rebuild society after Superman. Mm-hmm. After bad Superman. I, doesn't really have a name. They just call him Superman. He's not the Superman we know and love who saves the day. He's, yeah. he's an alternate universe. So I don't really know. I feel like we should call him something different to distinguish. Because they're both in the game. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the only reference to Superman in this universe sent, seems to be... I think I saw one story trailer a while ago. I don't really know a ton about the story. Most have been seeing character stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like he's locked up and something happens and Uh and go for his help. Like, you know, usually happens when the villain's locked up. I saw Gorilla Grodd. (laughs) Hell yes. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. I will play Gorilla Grodd. Like, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'm going to buy this game. But if it was just called, like, Injustice 2 Grodd's Day Out or something (laughs) like that, and you were just playing as Grodd, I would, I would, I would pay I, I would buy the deluxe edition. I would pre-order that shit. You just grab, like, wandering around, yeah. going through construction sites. Through reading people's minds and telling people secrets, ruining relationships. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, so, yeah, it looks like, at least from what I gather or, or read, is that, like, th there's a bunch of different factions and each of these characters, the new characters that they're introducing has a reason for being here in the story after what Superman has done and Grodd is here to kind of uh, step in uh, and he wants to build his own legion mm. to fill the power gap, which is kind of interesting. I hope there's not too many storylines. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they're doing with the timelines, because Damian Wayne is, is in it too, which in the first yeah. game, spoiler for the first game, he was revealed to be that universe's version of uh, Nightwing. Oh. Um, and he's much he's much older in that than he is, the Robin character is in Injustice 2, so mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. It's probably, you know, main universe, uh, you know, Damian Wayne. He does have a sword. It looks like he's, you know, going to be cutting people up. Man. That's the problem with multiple timelines going mm -hmm. at once. Everybody gets... You can't keep track of everybody. Yeah. Well, we don't know the story yet. We're not exactly sure. You know, for sure what, what's going to happen. The thing I've been most surprised watching on these character trailers is that... And, and we'll see how well expanded it is in the full game, but um, every different character combination seems to have different things to say to each other yeah. at least to a certain extent like at least one of those mm -hmm. characters has something that's unique mm -hmm. that's really interesting i always like that stuff and it seems like i've been seeing less and less of that over the years and even when i did mm -hmm. see it it would typically be like only very specific characters i but, can't recall but i think in the first i don't even think the first one had that i think they were just general like i aside from the story the story mode i think it was just I think there may have been some um, for, like, just very specific matchups. Well, I don't remember it um, being in there a ton. Like, I think I think um, Nightwing and Batman have one where Nightwing says he's going to take Batman down and Batman, like, kind of taunts him. Batman laughs. Mm. <laughs> he's like, ha, ha, ha. And then he goes for coffee. And... Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that, 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 he just goes for coffee. You can't even fight Batman and Nightwing in that game because Batman just laughs and goes to coffee. Where does Batman go for coffee? Starbucks. Like Starbucks? He just doesn't have to wait more. Tim, um, Tim Horton's guy? Those have been coming down to he's not Canadian, America. Man. Well, I mean, they're around. He supports America. America, America made, man. Um, so which of the... Uh, you, you, know, you know my pick. But so far of the revealed characters, the new playable characters that have been revealed, who tickles your fancy the most? Um, I know very little about the actual character, but I'm kind of excited for Blue Beetle. Yeah! yeah. yeah. I think it's because I like his design. And I'd seen Blue Beetle stuff before. It looked kind of cool. Um, I like, like, I'm a big fan of the color blue and glowy stuff. <laughs> and I am. <laughs> Follow Blue on Twitter. <laughs> it's just all pictures of different shades of blue. <clears throat> Fifty shades of blue. Oh man, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I need to get some water. But I do. When I have a choice to pick colors in games and stuff, I usually, you know, customize with different blue colors. He have a very, mm -hmm. it's a very catching color of blue. Mm -hmm. It's also probably a big reason why I like Nightwing. Yeah, but yeah. Nightwing is also just badass. They changed... Mm. You, you wouldn't know, but... I can't remember... I think it was in the New 52 they changed them to Red. And then now in the Rebirth, since they rebirthed everybody they've started, they brought him back to Blue. Mm -hmm. But he was Red in the New 52. What the heck? That was interesting, how, that, how they incorporated that into Injustice 1, though. That would probably... just talked about. Mm -hmm. Where the other world version was red. <clears throat> I'm sure he'll be the red, red, red night one will be back for this one. Yeah, it'll probably be a costume at least. Yeah, or a oh, that's what I meant. option. Um, which is interesting. That's all these different customizable parts. I'm kind of interested to see exactly how that plays out. I hope that it's not. There aren't too many like free to play like elements to that. Where you, I mean, it's likely that you're going to be able to buy packs. To get those, yeah, I haven't heard anything confirmed. Maybe they did say that, um, but hopefully you'll be able to unlock plenty of stuff on your own without having to pay too much, especially since it's a sixty dollars game. 
Or a hundred dollar game. Pay a hundred bucks. Yeah, to get oh everything. my god, that's ridiculous. It, it, it's, it is. There's three versions. And there's not even... Why are there three versions? And two, only two of them are physical. There's just something I... I yeah, Qu- quoting from Jim Sterling, if you need a uh, if you need a chart to figure out what you're getting in your game, uh, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, it's it's just I mean, they have a whole website dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. This is what comes with the sixty dollar. This is the eighty whatever, and then the hundred. Uh, I mean, you don't even get a, like a statuette or anything with a hundred dollar. Yeah, it's just here's all your playable characters, which is cool, but a hundred bucks. I mean, you're talking forty dollars worth of characters. I think there's other there's skins and stuff that's coming in there Ooh, too. Skins. But I mean I would I would rather have um just have the sixty dollar purchase and then just give me like a season pass that I can buy. I would even be okay with multiple like split season passes, like one that's for certain stuff like costumes and one that's just for character content and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um but just the <laughs> The look on there every time there's like three versions and that's just the digital versions. Well, I know the digital version, the digital deluxe is digital only. Mm-hmm. And then the sixty dollar and the hundred dollar are physical. You can get those physical. Which is it seems like an arbitrary system. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't really get that. Digital deluxe is all, it, I mean, it's so dumb. It is dumb. Because it's you can almost always get the exact same thing with the um, physical copy. Mm-hmm. So it's not you can even get that stuff like day one in stores. It's just the first printed stuff usually gets that. But we're getting Swamp Thing. We are. I can't wait. Now I I, I, I like Swamp Thing. Um I But his comics are very dark mm-hmm. and very like Alan Moore's run specifically. He's the guy who like popularized the character. Um but I mean, you're dealing with like hell and demons mm-hmm. and weird. It's not bestiality because he's not an animal. Yeah, he's but not he, a human. Yeah. It's it gets some weird territory. And then I read Scott Snyder's uh, run. I have the deluxe collection of that. Um, he Scott Snyder's terrific writer. He's my favorite comic book writer today. Working today. Even that's dark. Um, so as much as I like the character, reading him is feels like work. Mm-hmm. But playing that looks that looks awesome. Yeah. And the wings, I can't believe they gave him the wings. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. And that super was like punching people mm-hmm. underground and like tearing them, ripping them on. And oh my god, I can't wait. Did like a Bane style back break on a yeah, rock. Yeah, on a rock. Like stalagmites coming out of the earth. I mean, that, I don't know who they're going to introduce after that, but it better be like. The game's coming out pretty soon. They've announced a lot of characters. I'm not yeah. sure how many more we're going to get. Um, I don't know how you top Swamp Thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they, they. Actually, I'm not sure when. When did the trailer for Swamp Thing came out, come out? Uh, like I, think last they, week? I think they announced. Uh, or at least announce a trailer that had Cheetah and... Uh, yeah. Um, Cheetah and Catwoman, Catwoman. Poison Ivy, mm-hmm. Black Canary. I'm less excited for them. I think Poison Ivy looks pretty cool. Well, yeah. I mean, they look cool. I and mean, they're all cool characters, but... Mm-hmm. Swamp Thing is just... That's so left field. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of their choices are. Which is fine for me. Uh-huh. All right, we're going to move on for the sake of time. We've been... 15 minutes on that one. We, we really like Injustice. We were excited for it. Um, I did a YouTube review of this movie. I'm about to talk about, so you can catch that if you want uh, more of my thoughts there. Uh, that's Movie Minutes at YouTube. But I had the misfortune, Alex, of seeing... Well, misfortune. I got paid for it, so I'm not, I wouldn't say misfortune. Uh, a Cure for Wellness. A new psychological thriller. <laughs> it's billed as a thriller from director Gore Verbinski. 
So what I got from the Accolades trailer is that it's like nothing you've ever seen, but it has echoes of The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite things from trailers recently. I've never <laughs> seen anything like it except it's kind of like this thing. I've been hearing people compare a lot, compare it to a lot of things, and it does. It, 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 it like echoes a lot of things, but most of them are better than this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Gore Verbinski, of course. Uh, Mouse Hunt. Back in the nineties, you, know, you didn't watch Mouse Hunt. I probably did. I don't quite remember. I loved it as a kid. Haven't seen it as an adult. I would be curious to see if it holds up today. It's lit, like it's just two guys moving to a house and trying to catch this mouse, and all hell breaks loose. Oh seems. yeah, that's probably probably holds up. Probably. <laughs> and then at the end, they can't even like the whole house just collapses in on itself. You uh, say stuff about m- mice in the '90s. I always think about those uh, animated films, which are probably way better than mice. What? You don't remember like Secret of Nim and. I mean, it's not all mice, but no. You don't remember Secret of Nim or, or uh, Rescue Rangers or anything? Or Rescuers? The Rescuers. Rescuers yeah. down under, Mike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do, of course. I'm not sure if those are squirrels. They're they're no, they're, the Rescuers are mice. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you just said, but no. Um, he also did Gore Verbinski. That is, uh, the first American Ring movie, which was pretty well received. And then from there, he went on to Pirates of the Caribbean, which was well-received. I love this. One of my favorite movies. What did he do on Pirates of the Caribbean? He directed it. He directed it. I always thought Jerry Bruckheimer did it, but I think that's just because oh, they put his name on everything. Yeah. yeah, he's a producer. Um, and so then he did, which I love. I love Pirates, mm-hmm. the first one. And then Pirates 2, and then Pirates 3, and then he did Rango. Which I didn't like at first, but I was young. I've recently seen it again, and I really liked it. Uh, won Best Animated Feature that year, uh, 2011, I think. And I can't remember what he did after that. Oh, yeah, The Lone Ranger. Mm. Which bombed at the yeah. box office and with critics. And this is his first movie since then. Mm-hmm. And just like Lone Ranger, just like Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, it's over. Stu- it's two and a half hours long, mm-hmm. almost two and a half hours long, which is ridiculous for a horror but, but for any movie, really. I mean, that's a lot of time to ask an audience to sit through. Yeah. Um, yeah, a slow pace and a long run time. Oh my god, the, it, it's the worst. It's hard to sit to watch a movie like that in one sitting. Yeah, and then especially in this case when there's no. There's, there's a payoff, but it sucks. Mm. And it, it, you get those dazzling, weird images in the trailer. I like the trailers for this movie, and got me into the theater anyway. And then the first hour, I was like, yes, these, these are pretty cool. And then the next hour, I went by, I was like, it's pretty much just these images, and it was just. Dane DeHaan, who's good in it, and is a good actor. Um, he has a broken leg, so he's limping around this castle, this spa castle place, for two and a half hours. Just like, oh, here comes a here comes a staff member, better hide behind the door. He does that like four times in the movie. <laughs> and if he's not hiding behind a door, he's hiding in a corner, and people walk right past him, and they, or, or, or he'll go up to him and be like, could you get me, uh, I, I need to see this guy, and then well, the staff will be like, okay, I'll be right back. Then they'll take off, and then he'll look both ways. Nobody's coming. Reach over, take some important file, and then scuttle off. And it's, it's just that for two and a half hours. He seems to like that stuff. It's like thinking back, that kind of stuff's in Pirates of the Caribbean a lot. I think he likes shots where he has to frame someone like hiding behind something while other things are going on. And yeah, well, it's something like Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, which has a lighter cartoon feel. Like mm-hmm. that, that works, and it's funny. It's like the scene. I like the scene uh, towards the beginning of the first one where Jack and Will are under the canoe and then mm. boop, it lifts up and it's just their legs and they're mm-hmm. walking. And then like, like that, it's funny. Yeah, but this is not a, supposed to be funny. Kind of a Looney Tunes thing. Yeah. That, that kind of directing. And you can do that with something like Cat and Jack Sparrow. This guy that da- Dane DeHaan plays is a, he is a stiff. He is not fun to be around. He's a mm-hmm. jerk. Uh, and it, it's, it's really, because he's 
he's this ambitious uh, businessman who's working his way to the top. And so he's like mean and cares less about people and cares more about success. But then he gets to this place and he's nice as can be to the vill to the patients and the villagers, which is weird. It's very seemed very inconsistent of me. He didn't really seem like a character. Just seemed like we need to have a main character to get you through from one weird image to the next. And the cinematography is gorgeous, just like in all his movies. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies, even World's End, which is overstuffed, or The Lone Ranger had some uh, very beautiful shots. And uh, Rango, of course. Uh, the guy's a visionary. But he just, like... That, like That's almost what he cares about only. And it's just... It's, it's just did he write the film? No, he didn't. No. Oh, yes, he did. He yes, did? he did. He co-wrote it. He has a he and I don't remember the other guy's name. Yeah, I mean that that seems to be what I hear a lot when you talk about directors, especially ones like this that have done some things that are really good and ones that haven't. Is that they're either aren't paired up with a scriptwriter that's really all that great, mm -hmm. or a script that's that great, or. Mm -hmm. They co-wrote it, and that's, or they've been like trying to be like an auteur filmmaker, and they're not. They don't really have the strengths all around mm -hmm. or something like that. I my my feeling is he'll probably get one more shot. I I don't. I think it'll probably do fine. It it won't do. It, I I don't know if it's gonna make its money back. It was middle budget. It might. I, it's not gonna be a win. Mm -hmm. Um. My guess is he'll get one more shot because he co he's coming off of the Lone Ranger, which it had lots of hype behind it. Johnny Depp mm -hmm. had a huge budget, and then he goes to something that is like a low uh, mid budget horror movie, and it, you can see that like studios are like, I'm not giving you that much money again, and so he'll get one more. Is my guess it'll be even lower budget than this, and if that tanks, he's going to go to director jail for a little while. And stay there until he can come back, like M. Night Shyamalan, and be a good boy. Jerry Bruckheimer was in a was in his big ship in his office for a while after a Lone Ranger. Yeah, he can go away too for a while. All right, what's next? Let's talk about one of your games. All right, um, Neo. Neo. Yeah, I've been playing Neo recently. It's really fun. It's a fun game. I saw some gameplay from it. It mm -hmm. Doesn't look fun. That's because you're bad at video games. That's true. I'm the worst. No. Uh, you you could be better if you like. You you have to put in time. I'm just like busy yeah. doing this shit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, it's it's from Team Ninja, who made the Ninja Gaiden games, um, and as well as the Dead or Alive games. And it's a lot like. Uh, mixed between like Dark Souls and Ninja Gaiden, that's the best way I can kind of describe it to someone who doesn't really know much about the game. Um, it definitely takes a lot from both of those. Um, you know, it kind of has some of the methodical kind of exploring that Dark Souls has, where you kind of comb over everything to try and get all the resources you can. Um, but the combat's a lot faster. It's a lot more aggressive, and there's a lot more focus on you know, various button presses, and you know, you have two different types of attacks, like you have, you know, in a lot of character action games, where it's the, you know, your light attack and your strong attack, and but then you also um, can hold, hold down a button and use a different skill that you set, because you can get various different skills and abilities. And then you have this thing called key pulse. I can see your eyes glazing over right now. It just it sounds like a lot of work already. Yeah, it kind of is. Jeez. And that's fun? Yeah. Once you figure it out. <laughs> How long does that take? Um first first level or so. Oh. How um, long is a level? It depends. Um most main missions will take you probably over an hour. Um you know, they usually have like multiple stages. Uh the first mission is actually pretty easy and can it you know, introduces you to a lot of the concepts without mm -hmm. having enemies that are crazy hard. Um but yeah, they're, they're, it's split up into missions. Like, Dark Souls is usually just, like, one continuous map. And that's what a lot of people expect from those games. And this is you are in a mission, you do it beginning to end, and then you go to a world map where you have different options. Super Mario! Yeah, kind of. 
but Japanese. What? Ja- is- Japanese, like, in theme. Mario's Japanese. It's Mario. Spicy, you meet the ball. <laughs> it's Japanese. Yeah. Sounds pretty Japanese to me. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's all, it's, it's fun. I, like, I've enjoyed, like, having a more complex fighting system. That's something that I always, like, I like Dark Souls, but I always felt like it was, the combat was slower than I wanted. So that Bloodborne, which is from the same people who made Dark yeah. Souls, I prefer that just because it's faster in terms of combat. Um, and it's got a cool setting on this, you know, Victorian horror stuff in that game. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. They're, it starts out off just being straight werewolves, and you eventually start running into, like, Eldritch Horrors and stuff. It's Whoa! Nuts. Holy crap. Mm-hmm. I could dig that. Yeah. That sounds like an Emily Shaman movie. Yeah, except the twist isn't, like, it's not like a sharp turn. Like, things just start to change as you go through the game. Uh, yeah, Neo, Neo is all based on Japanese mythology. Which I think is pretty okay. cool. Um, you know, you get so much Western mythology, which I like Western mythology and fantasy. Well, when I say West Western mythology, I guess I mean like uh, Tolkien and um, bits of uh, you know Western folklore thrown in. Hmm. But uh, yeah, the, the the Japanese stuff is interesting, which is it's it's also a Tecmo Koei game. They produced it, and it's pretty usual for them to do. Japanese stuff, like, all of their games have some amount of, like, history, Japanese history put into it. Um, Neo is based off of actual people um, from the, uh, what is that, the 17th century? Is it 1600s? Early 1600s, yeah, 17th, late 1500s. 17th century. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I mean, obviously those there people... There were real people fighting werewolves? No. This I'm now I'm talking about Neo. I was talking Bloodborne has werewolves. Oh okay. Neo has <laughs> Tony and Yokai. It, it, these people weren't actually fighting demons, but they're they're based they off fighting? of actual people. I don't know, probably other people. It's like That's samurai. What I said. It was probably mostly politics, actually. Yeah. Um Which is way more exciting. Mm-hmm. That's just too politics. But yeah, you have the the premise is that you have William Adams. Um, don't know his actual uh, historical significance, but in the game he has a um, like a spirit familiar. It's it's it is. You say that like I know what that is. <laughs> it's just like you you've never heard of the concept of a familiar. Is that like a Patronus? Kind of, except it's like a sentient thing that you know stays around with him. Familiar. You've seen stuff seen like it, movie. you know, like, um, just oh. like a little, you know, spirit thing that follows him around and helps him out. And this one is, a um, the one in the beginning of the game is a Gaelic one, a, you know, old Irish mythological oh. uh, creature. And then it I gets... this was Japanese mythology. I know, I'm getting to that. Oh my god. This guy who is trying to collect this sort of, like, power is called um, Amrita for the British Empire so they can conquer of the Of course! Yes. It's the British Empire. Um, and you start in the Tower of London. It's the first level. And then his okay. cool. his spirit gets taken away by this guy. Um, Wait, his spirit familiar? Yeah. Okay. Like Not his spirit. His, yeah, his spirit familiar gets his taken away. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. the evil guy has, like, a snake one, which apparently can, like, turn him invisible, but it can also steal other people's. It's kind of... It hasn't Holy been explained shit, so I want one of these. I haven't beaten the game yet. But um, you chase him to Japan because he goes to Japan to mm-hmm. cause all sorts of problems and war and feuding and what stuff. What joke? Mm-hmm. And it's good. It's, I think it's the Warring States era. So I really like the idea, especially because we get movies about Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster, countless movies like that. Uh, but there are so many potential so mm-hmm. many rich mythologies around the world that i'd like to see people do you know movies video games what mm-hmm. comic books i want to see more of that and less 
Bigfoot movies. Yeah, I mean, I I really like Japanese folklore. I want want to actually read into more of the traditional stuff. I've gotten most of it from games and stuff like that, or Wikipedia. I want to start reading some books on it. But what I love about it is that a lot of it's just fucking weird. Yeah. Like, I know that happens in a lot of different mythologies, but Japan is, like, their mythology is eccentric in the way I guess you'd probably expect from Japan. <laughs> um, from a company that sells underwear and vendings on the street. That, that, that didn't really, that's not, like, still happening. Oh. That was, like, a couple of vending machines that got taken down pretty quickly. Karaoke boxes, man. Those are real. What do you mean? Karaoke boxes. Boxes? Like, yeah, they're like telephone booths. You walk in and pay your money and you sing along the song. People pass by and look at you like you're a weirdo while you're... I feel like those song. probably aren't all over the place. Probably just a video. I don't know. I've never been to Japan. <laughs> Neither have I, honestly. What I know about Japan is from YouTube. Mm. Like all my knowledge. It's mostly just people making fun of things that are actually... Uh, meant to be satire in the first place, but treating it like that's no, a normal thing for Japan. I don't know, man. I do know one Japanese person. Mm -hmm. She's pretty weird. Is she from Japan? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that was a... Oh. Oh. One of the big tourist cities. I can't remember. Osaka? Oh, now. Oh. Sounds right. I don't remember. Osaka's a pretty big tourist city. Um... So you like it? What do you get? Like, a... mm -hmm. I haven't beaten it yet, so I'm not. But, tell but me. it's getting Can a lot of ten it? out of tens. I'd I'd say it's got some issues. There's a you replay things a lot. Um, there's some stuff based off of random loot drops, which isn't bad. Um, they they do that pretty well. But there's a thing about rerunning missions or running missions that are just reskins of old levels. What? Um, they're all side missions, those ones are. Oh, the main okay. missions are really done, well done and well crafted. They care about those ones. Uh-huh. Um, they're the white children. <laughs> <laughs> and be, they're Japanese, so they'd be the Japanese children. As the white Japanese children. And they're the whiter ones, as opposed to the yellower ones. They would prefer the more Japanese ones. <laughs> They, they'd be less favorable of the half ones. That's something they say in Japan when someone comes and they, they're like part Japanese, they ask if they're half. It's kind of weird. It's kind of, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. They're, they're, they're a little uh, isolated as a country. I told you, she's weird. They don't have a ton of, um, ton of immigration. They, I mean, they have plenty of immigration, but not the most. It's mostly just Japanese people. Why are you drawing on She's, she's nice. Mm-hmm. One of the nicest people I ever met. Yeah. Nicer and they're pretty than polite. Most Americans. They are. They mm -hmm. take their shoes off at the door. Mm hmm. Uh, so, you said it's getting a lot of 10 out of 10s. Mm hmm. What I'd, is probably, that? I'd probably give it like a. Like a 8 or 9. It's like an A wow. minus. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's really good. It's got. I, I think it's got some issues that people have been glossing over. I, I think people go kind of crazy over these sort of Dark Souls style games. I mean, you can get really invested because that gameplay loop is can be really engaging of, like, mm -hmm. having to really pay attention and, and like, sort of high-stress moments that are followed by moments of, like, high elation when you succeed. It, it's um, it's good, but I, I think it's got a couple of issues. But it, it's, I mean, if, if you played any sort of Souls games, it's really good. Um... And I think even if you haven't, you can try out Neo. I mean, even if you're not great at the combat, the game gives you plenty of options to, you know, work your way around things. So. Are you saying I wouldn't be good at the combat? I'm saying that you would probably give up before you got good at combat. That's probably true. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up. So... Not this weekend. Last weekend was a really awesome weekend for movies. We already talked about John Wick. But there's another movie that came out that day that everybody should go see. Fifty Shades Darker? Yes. No, not Fifty Shades <laughs> Darker. I'm 
talking the Lego Batman movie starring your guy and mine Batman in Lego form and Will Arnett yeah who's pretty awesome um I love me some Lego Batman and uh again I my reviews on YouTube movie minutes at YouTube um so you can go there for my full review, but I want to plug it quick. On the, I want to plug it because I think everybody is like everybody going to this movie: kids, adults, bat fans, and it's, it's bat fans or Batman fans. What about both. people who are just fans of bats? They'll like it too. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's just one that reaches that. It's everybody. a glowing recommendation. It is. It Bat is. fans are a hard, a notoriously hard to reach demographic. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not a sequel. To, the Lego Movie, which was awesome. Everything's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so, but people are comparing it, of course. It's yeah, the I mean, I, Lego. as soon as I saw it, and I haven't seen it, I haven't actually watched the movie yet. But when I saw the first trailer, I just imagined it was probably like a loose spinoff. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. Um, I heard somebody talk the other day. I can't remember where, but they were they loved it, but they were a little disappointed because they thought the Lego Batman movie didn't really have the childlike wonder or imagination that the Lego movie had. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's mostly because, or at least in my opinion, I think because the Lego movie didn't really attach, it had a lot of mm -hmm. cameos from a bunch of characters from a bunch of different things, but it didn't uh, lay, it, it, it didn't hang its hat on a particular brand yeah and so it was more free its character was original chris pratt of course um so it could be more original and it played around with at the end it turns out being you know will ferrell and his kid are playing with legos which was a cool twist and i love mm -hmm. one of my favorite endings uh in a movie yeah i kind of had that same issue recently playing the last guardian but i know that it's not that game's fault that it takes a lot from the first two games from that developer but yeah that 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 can happen you kind of have these experiences that you've kind of already had and they're not yeah well that's what filled the same way yeah. and they're never going to be filled the same way because you yeah. already experienced and that's them. my point is i don't think like since lego batman does that i don't think this is try. i mean lego movie does that i don't think this movie is trying to do that mm -hmm. and this movie hangs its hat on the batman brand mm -hmm. it's a batman movie and so it, you know, it's not necessarily focusing on uh, Lego. Mm. I mean, it, it uses Lego aspects to its advantage at uh, certain storytelling aspects. But and there are allusions to the fact that it's taking place on a cheap, on a thin plate of mm -hmm. Legos, which is kind of cool. Batman. I mean, the Joker is trying to blow up the centerpiece of that, so so uh, Gotham City will collapse down and stuff, which is pretty cool. <laughs> But they never expand beyond that. And I think they don't really need to because it's focusing on Batman. It's not focusing on Lego. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it focuses on the Joker and Batman, specifically their relationship. And it's so funny. I, I don't like to use this word to describe movies. People do it all the time, but cute. Because mm -hmm. I don't really think cute really says much. He goes, oh, it's cute. People usually use it and then just know, oh, it's cute. But it's so freaking cute i took i took my fiance to see it i had already seen it we i took her in imac on valentine's day and she just smiling from ear to ear the entire time and then every time michael sarah said something as robin she went <laughs> and it's like that's what that movie that, that's what this movie is supposed to be mm -hmm. and it's so and she did that she's not a comic book fan like that she likes superheroes but she, she doesn't get into the lore like i do so uh like I said, she could, she as a just a general fan of superheroes and movies, uh, can take something away from it. I there's enough for someone like me who is a sweaty about Batman. There's a lot of nods, a lot of references, 
uh, and they really know the Batman character. Like, at, at his core, there's uh, Batman, like, in this movie, he doesn't like to take off his helmet and become Bruce Wayne, which plays well for laughs, but it's also, like, true to the character because, mm-hmm. obviously, that is that is Batman. To Bruce Wayne, he is Batman. And I'm wondering, and, in the film, when he takes off his helmet, does he have to put his hair on? No, it's already no, there. It's already there. He, he takes off, and then it's neat. Mm. And then it w- holds a second, and they cut, and then it gets poofy. Oh, okay. So no, he doesn't. That would kind of be cute. That that, mm-hmm. that would be more playing with the Lego brand. Yeah. It might distract from the fact that this is supposed to be a Batman story. I think Lego, or at least the people who've been handling like Lego properties, have done a pretty good job of, like the, um, the Lego games, the oh, branded yeah. Lego games, mm-hmm. do a good job of yeah. being kind of about the source material while making jokes that kind of involve Legos. Yeah. And so, to that point, we're about what what I heard this pe- this guy talking about before, like Lego Star Wars, mm-hmm. it uses the Lego brand to its advantage a lot of times for humor. Um, but something in like Lego Star Wars, the video games, it doesn't expand really on that concept, like the mag- like the Lego movie does. Yeah, well, and... it it stays more true to the source material, mm-hmm. the Star Wars brand. And that's what this movie does. The game, yeah, those games never really have the budget, or for, for whatever reason, they never really record vo- voice lines for those yeah. games. So it's they do a thing now since Lego Lord of the Rings, where they use clips from the films, the, the original Lego properties. Life. No, it's just it's just and the the animated scenes are all animated original like Legos, yeah, and they use the and then they use recording. the the uh, voice recordings from the films. Um, yeah. yeah, it's okay. I've tried oh, it. Except, except for the actually the the DC ones do have original voice acting. The like Lego Batman does have original voice acting in it. No oh, Batman. It's so much fun. It's yeah, I think it's largely the stuff that's based off of specific movies. Like I think the new Lego Star Wars uses um, uses audio from Force Awakens and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think I'd rather you just not talk. Yeah, me too, okay. honestly. Anyway, the Lego Batman movie. You should see it, Alex. Your nephew should see it. Your family should see it. Everybody should see the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, they probably will. Yeah. They're, they really liked the first Lego movie. They've been really into trolls recently, so I've been seeing that every time they come over. Can't stop feeling Can't it feel it in my body? Oscar nominated song. Just saying. All right. Um, man, we have a lot on the list. It's probably because we haven't done an episode in six months. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. So I alluded to this earlier off show. I'm getting married in July. Like, I do, and you may kiss the bride type of married. Mm-hmm. And typically when you do that, you go... On a honeymoon with your new spouse. Yeah. Uh, my spouse to be and I have recently watched a couple of horror movies based around getting married, and it scared the shit out of us. <laughs> um, let's see which one to talk about first. I loved them both. Uh, Siren. I've talked with you about this movie before. You probably don't remember. But I, I do not. Yeah. I, not surprised. So Siren is the feature film adaptation of Amateur Night. The short, the first short in the first VHS movie. Oh, you did talk to me about this. Yeah. I don't think you ever actually, I think you didn't know you had forgotten the name when we, uh, yeah. when we uh, were talking about it. Yeah. You just said that these guys made a full length you know, film. Yeah. And so do you remember the one I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. With the uh, creepy uh, gargoyle lady. Succubus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's... And she's back. That's she's the same actor. seem like a very good succubus. She's they're good. supposed to keep... They're supposed to uh, fuck you until you lose all your life energy. And they take it. Well, technically, she's a Lilith. Oh, okay. 
They call I don't know. They reference it. I know, I know that Lilith is a specific type. I don't actually know the specifics yeah. on that. That, you know. Well, a, a Lilith is a demon, much like a succubus, will fuck you. Mm-hmm. But they're ladies. Mm-hmm. And succubus are always. They'll take ladies. you, they'll take a mate for life. Mm hmm. And they'll use that guy's sperm to reproduce baby Liliths for life. Hmm. It's pretty terrifying if you yeah. the guy chose. Which is, and it kind of explains the ending of that mm-hmm. short when he gets picked up. And you know, I love when you're watching that and you're like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying, isn't it? And so they go into that a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, but I uh, can't remember her name. Something Friedman, Hannah Friedman or something mm-hmm. Friedman. Uh, she's back. As the succubus, this is, uh, we were watching it because uh, my fiance has seen Amateur Night as well. We watched uh, VHS 1 and 2 together. And uh, so when she first appears in this new movie, Siren, her introduction, Mariah goes, isn't that the same girl? I said, no, it's not. I said, they got a different actress. She goes, oh, okay. And then I did some research. Like, it's the same girl. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why does she look so dumb? Like four years after. Yeah. Um, Definitely explain it. Her eyes are still big. She's way skinnier in the short than she is in this one. Mm. Uh, still creepy as hell, staring at. And in this one, she gets a lovely voice to sing Siren. Of course, that's with him. Mm. She'll, no man can resist her when she sings. Uh, and then she'll either kill you, or if you're her mate, she'll fuck you. And there is a pretty terrifying rape scene in this movie where... She, she has a t- so she has a tail in this one, in this movie, which mm-hmm. she didn't have in Amateur Night. That we saw at least. Well, that we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is very pointy at the end. Mm-hmm. And she drops this guy off in a shallow grave, jumps on him, rips off his pants, does her thing, but while she's doing her thing on his thing, her t- I'm about to throw up. <laughs> Spoilers her tail, for the movie Siren, by the way. Her tail slithers up his ass. Yeah, I kind of still, I kind of saw where there, that was going when you mentioned and pointy tail. She's screaming because it's, I guess she's a sexual creature. That's what, that's what she does. Mm-hmm. And he's screaming probably because it hurts like shit. Probably. And it's terrifying. And then. You, and then the, 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 you get a scene after that where I guess they, they had a really good run in the mud because she's sleeping and she's tired and crawls away to call his wife. And it's, it's like I'm tearing up kind of just thinking about it because you know, watching him, you know that he knows this is probably the last time he's going to get to talk to her. Mm-hmm. But he also knows that he was just fucked by a demon from hell. And so he's got, like, these weird emotions going through him. He's mm. tearing up. It's just oh, it's some powerful shit. It's, like, it, 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 it's, it's the rare occasion where they take something, existing material, and they adapt it. And they take what's great about that. The, the first one, you, you got the practical effects, which are gory. Those are back. You had the interesting mythology that they don't really tell you in Amateur Night. They explore it a little bit here. They don't, t- and the, then they introduce more creatures and things that that, that are interesting. But that that they, they don't go into detail about it because this is the story about this man meeting the siren, and these other creatures just kind of temporarily play smaller parts. Uh, so the interesting mythology is there as well, and uh, of course the clever scares are, are, are there. And Amateur Night uh, is also great because it's short. Mm. It gets to the point, boom, and then it's done. And this movie's like 72 minutes, does the same thing. So it's all the good stuff about that short put into a feature film, and it will give you... It gave me nightmares. Ugh. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, the next movie... Do you want to say anything about Siren? I didn't see the movie. I know. No, no lingering questions from Amateur Night. Do you need answered? No, oh, really. Don't think she rips a dick off in this one. Well, I mean, you, you don't want to use the same gag too often, you know. That's true. Yes, it is true. Keep things fresh. All right, so, oh, and uh, 
I should probably say this because they're talking about honeymoons. Uh, he's this is during his bachelor party, so he's supposed to get married the next day. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna spoil the fuck out of it. Uh, he does get married. He makes this. De- he's supposed to entrap this demon to the guy. Okay, so the whole premise is his brother is his best man, and his best man brother is going to show this guy a fucking wild time of his life before he gets hitched. And so he takes this tip from the strange bearded man at a bar that there is this, like, pussy galore, like, fountain in the woods over here in the strange abandoned house. Go there, and you will not regret it. And so he's like, yeah, man, that sounds awesome. I'm going to take my friend there. I'm going to take my brother. And so they go, and they meet this strange guy who's running it. And, and it turns out that and, and, and the strange guy offers the the uh, guest of honor, the, the main character who's getting married, a uh, special film. He doesn't want to fuck because he wants to save that for his wife. Uh, but he wants to have a good time. So the guy goes, I got the perfect thing for you. Come here. So he shows him down a, a door. Uh, he walks down this walks down this creepy, weird hallway that's dark. At the end, there's this window. You look through this window, it's just white. And, of course, that's where she is introduced for the first time. She kind of, like, materializes from, from the, this white, misty room. She sings him a song, which gives him visions of pleasure. And she's kind of seducing him. And so, while this is going on, the bridal party, or the groom's friends and brother... Groomsman? Groomsman. That's, see, I'm getting married. It's a good thing you're going to be there. Um, I mean, so, be a groomsman. I, I, I don't know the terminology. Um, the price is that this strange guy who runs this house will give the batch the uh, to be husband this special show with the siren for a price, and that price is uh, the memory of their fondest memory of their mother. <coughs> I need a drink. A lot of exposition. And it's... And they're like, okay, sure, whatever. But he re- really ends up taking their memory, of their, the fondest memory of their mother. With, like, leeches from this creature um, who takes memories. Um, so that's what's happening while he's back there getting, you know, pleasured by the siren's sweet, sweet song. And he's like, oh, man, that was the best. And so he's leaving, and he's walking past this door that's padlocked with this huge fucking lock, which you know, right, don't touch that. But he's walking, and then he's walking past it. He passed it the first time, but you don't see it. He walks past it again, and then you hear the voice go, don't leave me. And of course, don't leave me. Fuck. He's, he, he, he doesn't know what this thing's a creature. Mm-hmm. He's thinking this girl's... Locking her up. Mm. And so, of course, he frees her, and that's when all hell breaks loose. So that's how it ties into the honeymoon theme. Already, I don't want to get married. <laughs> so then we, the other night, we watched this movie called Honeymoon. Now, there's two honeymoons on Netflix that I'm aware of. One is about this guy who kidnaps this woman and forces her to marry him or something. Sounds stupid. Netflix is like, you're only going to like it one star. So I'm like, okay, I won't watch it. This other honeymoon, Netflix is like, yo, check this shit out. You're going to like it four and a half stars. I'm like, oh shit, I got to watch this. So I'm like, honey, come here, we got to watch this. Uh, she wanted to watch something else, huh? but Netflix insisted. So we watched it. And it kind of freaked me out more because on our honeymoon, we're renting a cabin. Out in the middle of the woods. And this couple, in this movie, in this movie, on their honeymoon, renting a cabin out in the middle of the woods. And some strange shit starts to go down. And like, oh shit, this, this fucker's haunted. And the tension just builds and builds. It's stranger and stranger shit just starts happening. And then she's hiding secrets from him. And he knows she's hiding secrets. He tests her. She lies. He's like, yo, what the fuck? Why are you lying? Are you having sex with this guy? Because this cabin is in this hometown with this woman, which, of course, 
an ex lover lives still lives there, and she's like, "Are you, are you with him behind my back and all this shit?" And it's just, and you're like, "Get out of there! You, you're fucked." These spirits, these spirits got her. Um, spoilers again for honeymoon. Um, because I can't talk about this move, these move. I, 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 spoilers. I need spoilers in my life. I don't like talking dead. So it gets to a point. He walks in on his wife, who has bush cutting, not like like she's using hedge hedge, hedge clippers. Shoving them into her own vagina. And oh. cutting shit up. I was about to make a joke about her cutting your pubes, but fuck. <laughs> yeah. She's cutting something. <laughs> Just a put up and she's like that, 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 that you're like, what the shit at this point? And it turns out it's not ghosts at all. You remember when we went to go see Kingsman? And they open that song, and they open that movie with the uh, um, "Money for Nothing" by Dire Straits. I was like, "Darn! I've always like I want to do that. I've wanted to open my movie, whatever movie I make one day. I wanted to open it with Dire Straits' "Money for Nothing," and they did that. This movie takes an ending that I wanted, and it's to make a horror movie. Have you think? It's fucking ghosts the whole time. And then it's aliens. <laughs> <laughs> these aliens are coming to this town and implanting these women with... It, it doesn't really explain. I, I, it, it, you, it doesn't really explain it. And so I had to go and I watched YouTube videos of interviews with the director to find out because I had to know what the fuck was going on because it doesn't really tell you. Um, just, but they... Apparently they've implanted this thing into her vagina. It like grows and it turns her into one of them. It's not a living thing per se. It's, it's, it's like a, a alien USB thumb drive mm. with alien information on it. They shoved into her. It's kind of like one of those short films in uh, VHS one as well, where this girl seems like she's getting haunted by these little kids and. She's really like yeah. Get having oh my like alien babies cut out of her like back. Totally forgot about that. It's almost exactly like that. Mm. And uh, except there's no babies. She's just turning into an alien. Mm. But she ends up killing her her future her her husband because she's trying. She doesn't want the same thing to happen to him. What's happening to her? And so he drives, ties her up, drives her up to the middle of a lake. Throws an anchor into the water with him, and the whole time he's like, "No, no, this isn't saving me. This isn't protecting me. Listen to me. You're you're not straight in your head. Listen, listen, listen." And it, boom, then he's gone. And he's like, oh shit! And just fucking him. And I love it because it starts out cheesy, of course. Uh, my new married couple. Mm -hmm. uh, I love you, honey. I love you too. Mm -hmm. uh, but. <laughs> You really care for him. And then she's fucking, like, mm -hmm. sending him to Davy Jones' locker. And it just fucking broke my heart, man. Now I can't get married. I, 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 told, I told my fiance, I told her it's over. I hope she even... I didn't really. I love her, and I want to get married. But damn. You're not, are, are you going to be out in the woods? I thought you were still going to be near the town. Or yeah, we are. Yeah. It's very woodsy, but you'll mm -hmm. see when we get there. Yeah, but it's not like... No, it's not secluded yeah. like that. Oh, man. All right. Anything else you got? Nope. I think it's about time to wrap up for it. I'm assuming we're about an hour. That's a good time. Uh-huh. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of Port of Dorks. I have been Jordan Peterson. This has been 
Alex Klein Storage. You can hit us up on Twits, on the Twits, at the Twitter sphere, the Twitter, uh, me at Muppety Man. That's Jordan. And then Alex. And the knife ear. The knife ear. That's yep. exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. The, the knife, like knife, like kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then ear, like what's on the side of your head. Mm -hmm. The knife ear. And Muppety Man. You can also find me, uh, my blog, uh, Movie Minutes, movieminutes.blogspot.com. You can also find me, uh, Movie Minutes, at YouTube, uh, on YouTube at Movie Minutes. And thanks for listening, guys. Until next time.